Hello, this is uh, the Recreational Maths folder. So, um, what I've decided to do, because I'm kind of like, I get curious about different things, uh, just like conceptually, and then like I explore them and uh, um, do a bit of maths and, and see what's there kind of thing. Um, so it's all, or nearly all from first principles, I might sometimes, so far it's all from first principles, but maybe sometimes I'll use something that's from somewhere else, but anyway. Um, so, uh, what I've decided, because this is kind of like, I've been doing this for a long time, uh, and I've got loads of different things that I've just done over the years, but I've never really kind of written anything up or done anything with it. So, the concept here is I've got a folder in Jumpshare called Recreational Maths, and in this folder I'm just going to put so if you have the link to uh, the recreation maths folder um, when I update when I put something new in this folder you'll be able to see it yeah and um, so what I'm going to do is as I do stuff like so I got very interested in what happens with two binary variables and this is uh, the folder to bind the variables and uh, and then I did a little bit of exploration with uh, partitions um, very, very much from first principles just really basic stuff in a way but I don't know I mean I did a Google search for some of the things in there and uh, I can't find the polynomials so I don't know if they know or not but anyway it, it doesn't really matter it's not it, it's just you know I'm my own intellectual curiosity i get interested in things this is how i am and i go oh i wonder what's the case here and then i try and work out okay what's the case so for instance binary variables um and and so what i've done or uh, what i'm trying to do is in each case i'm going to write like a written report and uh, I'll update the written report, you know, if something new happens and I'll update. And um, so in the written report, it's kind of more or less, you know, trying to explain, okay, what, what did I find when I looked at this? So, so this document here, two binary variables, um, I'm looking at basically what is the set of possible relationships between two binary variables. Now, if they're completely independent of each other, each binary variable is just like, um, a coin of unknown probability it's just heads or tails but you don't know the probability and it could be you know, uniformly anything unless you've got some information about um, how bias is going to be in one way or the other or whatever um, but if you've got two binary variables that's not the only set of possibilities because maybe one of the variables depends on the other variable or the other way round yeah um, so then the question is, okay, well, when are they independent, when are they not independent, that sort of thing. And it turns out quite nicely, actually, that we get this funny wing shape. Let's I'll, I'll bring it up in... No, we'll just take this a minute. So, so yeah, this is the top half of it. And then there's the bottom half as well. I'll try and find it in Python because that's not actually the best in diagram of it. Um, but as you can see, like the reason I've just done the top half of the, 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 this is because you can see like from that front profile there, this is like quite a good kind of wing shape. And I would imagine it gets quite a lot of lift. Because when you look at the side profile, it's got a good kind of side profile. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. I, I think this is the one that will actually plot. Um, when it loads. Okay, so this is the whole thing. So. So basically what we've got here is the red axis is A, the blue axis is B and the green axis, I know the green axis is B and the blue axis is D. Um, in
Yeah, binary variables. So we're talking about a probability grid where essentially, so if you've got two binary variables, it, the possibilities are defined by the, the probabilities uh, of the various combinations. So maybe both of the coins go ahead, so that would be y equals 0, x equals 0, and that probability is A. And then maybe y is, is tail, uh, y, no, those would be tails, I guess, 0 is tails. And um, if y equals 1, so y is heads, x is tails, then the probability would be B, and so on. So the axes in this figure, um, the red axis uh, is A, the red axis is A, the blue axis is uh, B, no, no, the blue axis is D, so the main diagonal here, yeah? and then the um, probability B that X is 0, so X is uh, so they're opposite to each other, x is tails, y is heads, that's the y-axis. So, And all of these go from 0 to 1, so at 0, the probability of everything would be 0. So then if a, b and d were 0, that means c would be equal to 1, so every single time you get y is tails and x is heads. So there's a very boring relation between the x and y at the origin there, so that's the origin. and then. Up here, now you've got probability 1 for for B, so because the probabilities are always add up to 1, A plus B plus C D plus D equals 1, um, so if B equals 1, all the others equals 0, so then every time you would get Y is heads and X is tails. So this is Y is heads, X is tails, this is... Um, C equals 1, which is Y is tails and X is heads. Yeah, so they're kind of opposite to each other. And the region in the graph is actually the space where the two variables are independent to each other. So where you could consider them like two separate coins. And everything inside the sort of the pyramid shape is a set of all possible relationships between the two binary variables but the only places in that space where the two binary variables are independent are this red and green region and the red and green the difference between red and green uh, if we go to the, document, the difference between the red and the green is because we work out B which is a green axis if you remember um, we work out B from this equation which is a quadratic equation so we get this quadratic equation a plus d minus 1 so in other words the sum of the probabilities on the main diagonal minus 1 times b is the so so that so that's the coefficient of b in the quadratic this is a quadratic in b usually you see x squared plus something times x plus something times but um, uh, plus a constant yeah, so this AD is just a constant, it's just a number, and that's the product of the probabilities in the main diagonal, yeah? And um, so the plus and the minus are the two possible solutions. So if you're given the two probabilities on the main diagonal, A and D, yeah, if we look at the, the grid in... Uh, so if you're given the, the, these two probabilities, the probability is that they're the same, but for the different side, and you know that they're independent, then you get a quadratic in B. And if you take the plus, then that would be the green. Wait a sec, no, let's put it the right way up so I can get that. Um, sorry about this. Trying to get. Okay, I'm, I'm going to to go back to the code. I think we'll just get rid of that and run it again because I just want the original um, orientation on the graph here, yeah? and then we can see uh, 
Um, so yeah, so I lost the thread of what I was talking about there. So oh yeah, so the green region is the the B is po uh, B is plus uh, in the quadratic equation. So that's the plus. Plus is green and minus uh, is red. In the quadratic equation, if that makes sense. Um, and, and that is the set of possibilities basically for B uh, in, um, uh, in the, the set of possible probabilities. So within this, within that sort of pyramid, the probabilities will add up to one. Um, uh, so that's why that's the that's the three-dimensional shape in which the set of all possible uh, two by two um, binary variables uh, exists. And then, um, yeah. Anyway, I, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail here because I don't want this video to be too long. So let's just go back and let's go back again. So and the other one. So so yeah. So that was the ADB space in the, in those figures, and um, then it turns out that there's uh, a, basically another axis that you could think about in terms of what's the probability that that they're the same and the probability that. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into it now, uh, but I might do at some point. So here, uh, partitions, I, I just started really basically, okay, what's the definition? And then, like, there's a very, so, um, yeah, boundary conditions. So obviously, the number of ways, so P, K of N is the number of ways of adding up to N using numbers no bigger than K. So for instance, what's the number of ways that you can add up to 5 using, so n equals 5, when k equals 3. So you're not allowed to use any numbers bigger than 3. Uh, and then that would be like, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly what the answer is. Ahead, but it's here. So n equals 5, k equals 3, so there'd be 5 possibilities. So like, the biggest number you could have. So if we put them in order, like the biggest one would be three plus something. So three plus two would be like using the biggest ones. Three plus one plus one. That would be okay. The two possibilities: three, and then for uh, two, we've got two plus two plus one. That's five, and two plus one plus one plus one. That's five. And there's no other possibilities there, so you've got two possibilities there, and then the final possibility is just all ones, and that gives you five possibilities, which is when k equals three for n equals five, which is five. Um, and we can we we find a sort of simple re recursive relation, uh, which is basically if you think about it. Oh well, anyway, it's explained in, in the document here. The simple recursion. If we consider, for example, the sum that make up p11 written out in order, starting with the largest leading term and working downwards, the first term will simply be 11 equals 11. Yeah. The next will be 10 plus 1. There's no other possibilities with 10. But when the leading term is 9, there are two possibilities. Uh, 11 is 9 plus 2, and 11 is 9 plus 1 plus 1. So the leading term is 9, and there are 2 remaining to make 11. So these two possibilities correspond to P of 2, the number of partitions of 2. Yeah? And in general, if we continue down the list and consider the leading term with 5, then we see that after subtracting the leading 5, we are left with 6. And here we, we notice that it's not the same as P of 5. However, the number of pos possibilities is not P of 6. Because if there was a 6, it would already have been further up in the list, assuming that we put them in order. Yeah. 
So, so the number of rows with a leading five corresponds to the number of ways of adding to six. Using numbers less than five would be p of five plus six. So, and from this observation, we can see that we just add up for each of the leading numbers uh, what the p of k is, and then we get this equation. And if we look uh, for as a specific example, like here, where n equals ten and k equals eight, so p k of eight, uh, p eight of ten is forty. And we can see that that's actually the same as adding these numbers on the diagonal. So the, these green numbers correspond to this side of the equation, and the orange one corresponds to this one. Yeah. And then we look at differences of equations. So we can find p k equals two quite easily. I mean, I think the pattern is pretty clear: one one two two three three four four five five six six. We can write it that way, uh, and then the three uh, do a little bit more arguing, uh, and actually this comes out. So I, what I've done is numeric exploration. So I started just from this recur recursion here. I can just generate a list of the numbers, and then I can generate a list of the differences of the numbers, and then the differences of the numbers again. And obviously, if it's gonna, if it's a polynomial then at some point the differences of the differences of the differences, whatever number you go to, will just be a constant. And then uh, you can work out what order polynomial it is. Like if you only had to find the di difference and then that was a constant, then that would be linear. If you had to do it two times, it would be quadratic, three times poly uh, uh, cubic and so on. Um, but then there's a then there's like well how do you find the coefficients of that polynomial? You know it's a cubic, but what's the what? How do you find the coefficients? And actually, in general, if you go, let's see now. I can't tell it. So in general, you're solving a, a set of simultaneous equations. Them. Sorry, I'm looking for them now. Um, yeah, here. So, so we got. So, so basically, in every case, whatever the polynomial is, the very first term is just going to be the constant term, and that's not going to affect the difference because it's always going to be added. So, for instance, uh, if it's just a quadratic ax plus ax squared plus bx plus c, the c is always going to be added every time. Uh, so when you work out the differences, it'll just be c minus c. So so the c's will disappear. So it'll just so whatever the linear term is, the, the, that is the difference between the quadratics, um, that won't depend on c for for a quadratic. It'll only depend on a and b. Yeah. Um, so this is when k equals four, um, and we get a cubic equation. So, so quadratic uh, and um, a, a linear terms are sort of fairly easy to work out what the coefficients are just by looking at the numbers. Yeah. Um, so, but with a cubic, uh, it's a little bit more hassle to work out what they are. You can because it's just a set of simultaneous equations and you can work them out. Um, but it's also worth noting what the pattern is here for this these simultaneous equations because if you want to solve them for four. Or five or six, you know, if you want to find out what the the coefficients are for a quintic equation, uh, you're going to be set with a, um, a set of uh, um, equations. So yeah, a, b, c, yeah, d is the constant term, and notice we've just subtracted that from everything. Um, so we've just taken the, fir the first, the first f zero is the first term. That's where we just put an x equals zero in. And that will just be in the equation because all the x's are zero. That will just be equal to d. And then we just subtract that from everything. So f zero is just d. Um, and then uh, f one. Well, that's just a plus b plus c because x cubed, x squared, and x are all equal to one. Yeah. And then it's square. Uh, then it's two, and then it's three. 
So we can see the pattern. We got ones and then two, two squared, two cubed, three, three squared, three cubed. And I, if we go to the next one, it would be for four, then we'd have ones in the top row again, because obviously even if it's for the fourth, um, a, a quadric equation, then the x's would all be ones, whatever power you, you put them to. So it would just be all the coefficients added up as the first row. And the second row would again be two, two squared, two cubed, and then two to the four. And then in the third row, you'd have three, three squared, three cubed, three to the four. And in the fourth row, because you'd have another row um, to find a four, because you'd need five numbers to work out what the polynomial is. Uh, but then the next one would be just four. The coefficients would be four, four squared, four cubed, and four to the four. So then you can actually work out because so. Yeah, so you know basically what the matrix of the coefficients are um, in the simultaneous equation uh, and then from the numbers, these numbers come from the actual, here the list, uh, the actual list you're trying to infer the coefficients from. Um, but we've subtracted the 1 in each case, so 33 is 34 minus 1, 168 is 169 minus 1. And then that's how we get basically to um, the, co the coefficients for the polynomials that we can say. And the, and the funny thing is, um, it's not uh, in the case of uh, p equals three. That polynomial, it's a, it, it turns out that the partition, these partition functions are only uh, exactly polynomial for certain multiples of n. So we have to say that n divided by 12 for uh, p of 4. And then you get this qubit. So in between, they might not exactly match because of the flaws. But interestingly, for the cubic, it does exactly match. Um, so you get p when x is a multiple of 6, it's this. But when you just take the integer of this, um, put it in n over 6, that gives you the right answer. So p of 3 of n is actually this. But also you can work it out using flaws going from the p of 2 expression. And then when you put the two together, you get this kind of quite neat equation here, which is 6x minus 2 minus 3i all over 2, taking the floor of that, summing from 0 to 2x minus 1, and you very nicely just get 3x squared minus x, um, which is easy to prove. I, I give a proof here, and it's sort of true, but uh, it's easy to prove, but you wouldn't necessarily come up with that expression. I think it's quite a nice expression. Um, and so far, okay, I, I worked out for p of 4. It's got to be a multiple of 12 for p of 4. And for p of 5, it's going to be a multiple of 60, and this is a polynomial. And for, for p of 6, it is actually 6, so I just need to change that title. By the time you look at it, it will change, because I, I'll update that. Um, so when n is a multiple of 120, you get this quintic equation with these coefficients. And so for you, so you could actually work out uh, p of six for 120 billion, because then you just have well a billion has um, nine zeros, so to the five would be 45 zeros, so you put 45 zeros on the end of this this a, so you've got 48 zeros altogether, 288 and 48 zeros, and so on for the other ones. So you could quite easily actually work out, and I might do that, I might put that in the document, like what the answer is for that, for like a billion. Um, and then also obviously exploring like the differences between these polynomials. Um, uh, we actually end up with quite a nice equation. So that, so if you're given um, uh, an arbitrary cubic, and you've got a list of the, cube, uh, of the values of the cubic when you put in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you, you make that list and then you look at the differences. The differences turn out to be this 3ax squared plus 
3a plus 2a x plus a plus b plus c. Now I don't know what the exact pattern is in general, um, but we do notice that we've got something very similar to differentiation going on here from ax squared to 3ax, ax cubed to 3ax squared. Um, so there's some there's something with the differences that I, is is matching or similar to the differentiation, which isn't entirely surprising. But when you work out um, when you match the coefficients, so you imagine you've got uh, a cubic, uh, and then you've got the equation. No, this is quadratic. Oh, okay. then. Oh yeah, no. So uh, imagine you've got a. Um, so you, so the, this is working out. Okay. So say we've got this uh, cubic equation, uh, a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus d, and then we take the differences. We know it's going to be a quadratic. So let's say that that's the quadratic q x squared plus r x plus s, and then let's equate that with this expression for the differences, and then. We work out, I mean, it's not very difficult, a little bit of algebra, and a equals q over 3, b equals r minus q over 2, and c is equal to s minus a plus b. Yeah? Now, if we let d equals 0, because the, um, the constant term in the cubic equation isn't relevant to the um, uh, sum of the quadratics, we get this nice expression for the sum of the quadratics. So the sum from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of the quadratic is equal to this cubic, where the coefficients of the cubic are given by q over 3, r minus q over 2, and s minus a plus b. And also, you could, and I, I probably will at some point try and find um, the ones for 4 and 5 and stuff like that as well. Now I know these, uh, the equation for the sum of uh, x squared, x cubed, and x, you know, they're all known equations, but still this is quite a neat way of expressing the sum of the full quadratic. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, so I, I, that's kind of what I've done so far. I've got some other things so I'm sort of planning to put up there, and um, hopefully it'll sort of, uh, hopefully it'll sort of grow over time, you know. Um, but anyway, this is just a, a kind of introductory video to kind of let you know what this folder is about and uh, what I'm going to be doing. So the link for this folder, um, if you go to that link uh, later, it, it should update with anything new that I've actually put in there. So you can check and see, okay, is, is there something new? And you can catch up with basically what I'm doing with my uh, recreational maths uh, stuff. Okay, and I'm going to end the video there. Hope everything is going well for everyone. Blah blah blah. Happy days.